all children learn language and social skills and play skills through imitation. And kids with autism and toddlers with signs of autism or other delays tend to be very delayed with imitation. So today we are talking all about how to teach imitation using objects first and foremost um, in your plan. So let's get to this special little video blog on object imitation. Welcome back to another video blog. I am Dr. Mary Barbera, autism mom, board certified behavior analyst, and best-selling author of the brand new book, Turn Autism Around, an action guide for parents of young children with early signs of autism. Just came out at the very end of March, 2021. So it's um, selling really well. It's helping a lot of people. So if you haven't heard about it, you want to learn more, you want to get free book resources with or without a book purchase, just go to turnautismaround.com. So this video blog is actually a little excerpt from a question and answer call I did with my um, online course members today. And the question revolved around imitation and how to teach a child imitation skills. And I actually demonstrated with some objects. So let's play that Q and A session on object imitation. So I do have a little show and tell here, and this, I'm going to jump down to a question on a 33 month old who is on module five of the early learner course. He's very good in terms of verbal imitation, but not nonverbal imitation. And most of his actions that he knows are rote as per his BCBA. We have to do hand over hand before he can do a new action. Even when he is watching TV, he does not do the action, but sings the song. So I have some more information about what I might look at, at as part of the course. Um, but one of the things that I am not sure exactly where this is in the courses, but the one thing you need to do is get object imitation straight. Okay, so we want to we want to collect, and I did this last night when I saw this question. We want to gather identical items of things. This is to improve imitation. We want to start with object imitation. So first, we have to gather some stuff that looks identical. So I found these little drumsticks that are identical to plastic spoons, to plastic cups, to green napkins, to yellow blocks. Um, you know, you could get two red blocks, okay? So you're not gonna present all of these things at the same time. I just wanted to show you first, we gather items. Um, and the real goal isn't to target He'll put the red block in the cup. And the other thing to prevent rote responding is you want to, to have each set of items do two different things. And, and I didn't find like in my little search last night, I didn't find like two little cars that match. If you go through drive through, which is not good, I'm not, uh, not agreeing that we should be driving through and getting happy meals, but you know, it happens. And sometimes if you have two kids, you get two identical happy meal toys. So those kind of things uh, can be good to use for object imitation. So I would keep all of these things together in a bag and then it's time for object imitation. So while I have two cups, I, um, I don't have a child here, but say I do have a child and he's sitting next to me or catty corner for me Th these two things one block and one cup are his set and my set is here one cup and one so he's got his set i have my set and then to get object imitation going you say do this and then you move and then if you need to you can help him by, um, you know, tapping on or putting in. 
Okay, so, so that was with a prompt. You might wanna try the exact same thing without a prompt, do this, or with less of a prompt, he does it, okay? So then you um, also might wanna have the cup here, but instead of saying do this and going in, you say do this and you see how we use the objects for different things? We could even have the, all the objects out and we could say, do this. So that's the kind of thing. Now, if it sounds like this question came from a listener who, who has a behavior analyst and they might wanna write down targets like flip the cup or red block in cup or tap red block two times. That's fine, but this is what we're after. We're after anything, you know, that, the, I mean, if the child can put a, a red block in, a bigger red block in, they should be able to put a yellow block in. So, you know, obviously it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. Um, then maybe you do this, and then you say, do this. Um, you wanna get that generalized responding going and not focus on just every time he sees the yellow block, he knows that goes on to the, the cup. Um, the other thing you can do is, is just with blocks, you could, um, you know, and this is more about like a functional place, play, do that, you know, he has his block, do this, and then he does that. Um, that is really good. Uh, spoons and cups, you know, do this. And then you could do, do this. That's more of like a play thing. Um, you could even pretend to eat, do this. Um, num, 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 num. Um, not to put it in your mouth, obviously. Uh, cars, whatever you have. But the big thing is, in the beginning, you have a set. They have a set. It's identical. You might be able to then get to a, you know, one set, do this, and then he repeats it. Um, do this, and he repeats it. Or you have more functional toys like a farm or a dollhouse. Do this, make the doll go up the steps, and he has a non-identical doll to make it go up the steps. Once you get, uh, and this should be a fun program, this should not involve any issues, you know, if they need more prompting or more help, you know, maybe less materials, maybe this is too many materials. I just brought out a variety, um, just looking around my house quickly. So once you get um, the child willingly, happily doing object imitation, um, then you start with gross motor imitation which usually the first two things, and don't work on one thing at a time. Each, each of these should have three to five targets or three to five things you're working on at a time. So I like to start with do this, like motions that also involve noise versus do this, um, do this, you know, or something like that. Uh, you could say, do this, touch your head. The problem with head is the child um, can't see it unless you're in front of a mirror. And so sometimes it helps to like have the, the motions be um, in front of them, even do this. Um, and the other important thing when you are trying to teach imitation skills is you say, do this, and then you move. So if I'm saying do this and you know, it's do this, um, because it's a clear, like do this is kind of a signal for like, oh, I have to copy exactly. And um, it starts out with object imitation, then you go to gross motor. Then once you get a number of gross motor things together, you could start fine motor, like do this, do this, do this, um, you could start, uh, after that, you could start head motions, do this. You could see how functional this is. Yes versus no. Um, now whether they cognitively understand yes and no is, is going to be another skill. 
Um, but shaking head, yes and no. Even, you know, if they can do that, then oral motor, do this, ah, uh, do this. Not, not even to say it. Do this, do this. But if they can do all of those things, but you don't want to start here because there's no way to prompt this or it's not appropriate to prompt oral motor. So you have to really start at the very beginning and move up to get your imitation strong. Most kids, all kids learn through imitation. That's the way babies and toddlers learn. That's the way they learn language. That's the way they learn social skills, play skills, and pretty much everything. So we have to make sure that we're working on imitation, starting with object imitation. I hope you enjoyed that short excerpt from my community. If you would like to be a part of my community or learn more, you can always attend a free online workshop at marybarbera.com forward slash workshops. If you like this video, I'd love it. If you share it with others, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I'll catch you next week on another episode of Turn Autism Around.